Um, the first thing that we're going to do is start up top with this uh, toolbar here. This is called the static toolbar. Um, and what I'm going to do first is click this little arrow right here. And what this arrow is going to do is expand and give me a few more options on this top bar. And, and again, that was just by clicking this arrow here. See, I can make it go out and then go back in. And then while I'm over here, I'm also going to expand um, what I like to call the side tools. Uh, over here on the right, uh, you'll see you've got two arrows here. I'm just going to hit this first one right there. And that's going to bring out a couple of different options. Um, as you can see right there, but I'll get to those later. All right. So the very first thing that we're going to start with is, uh, just this basic button right here. I mean, this is a new document you click this and you can start a new one. As you can see, it just created another tab right here. Uh, if you want to also start a new document, you can click this button right next to the tab that you're seeing right here, and that'll open up another tab right there. So two ways you can do it, pick your poison. Um, I mean, you can also go to file and new. Um, so that's that. Then over here, you can use this to open previously saved jobs. Um, you'll, it will open this up and then of course you'll go and find whichever, wherever you save the file. Um, uh, this is mainly for opening other Vinyl Master documents. Um, if you're wanting to open like another type of image, uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit later and I will show you how to do that. This next button here um, will open up your recent jobs. As you can see, I've got these thumbnails right here, um, but it will let you, well, you can check this and you can see it that way. Here, let me go back to the original screen. Yeah. So this is the first screen that they have here when you click it. And it just brings up, you know, some of the more recent ones that you've done. I'm using the demo version of Vinyl Master because you can't have two versions of Vinyl Master installed on the same computer. Uh, I have Vinyl Master DSR installed on this one. Um, so I didn't want to uninstall it just to put a cut. Um, but I did install the demo because that is going to allow me to show you some of the other versions too. All right. So that is, you know... <clears throat> your open recents button. Then right next to that is the save button, uh, indicated by this floppy disk here. That's um, grayed out in the demo version, but um, you know, it's pretty basic. You'll pick a directory or save as, and I'm sure everyone who's used a computer knows how to use the save. The next button right here is just a printer button. Um, if you're gonna be doing contour cutting, cutting or anything like that, you will be using the print button a lot. Um, I do a lot of my laser transfer printing in the Vinyl Master program. Um, so um, when you pull it up, it's, you know, it gives you plenty of options here. I'll just go ahead and show you uh, some of the options that I'll have for a ghost printer. Um, I can choose, you know, my paper quality type, and that's the most important thing there. And then you've also got some more advanced things that you can change there. So, I mean, it gives you some pretty decent options for printing. Not as much as, say, Illustrator, Photoshop, or Corel Draw, but uh, it's enough for me to get, get what I need done. Um, and there's a lot of, and, and the reason it has so many printing features is because you will be printing for your contour cutting. Uh, if you were to upgrade your Vinyl Master to... <clears throat> Excuse me. If you upgrade to another version of Vinyl Master, uh, like say the letter or the pro, it will start unlocking more print options and then also some patterns and some other things that you can do. Uh, because with say the pro or letter version, they're expecting you to do a little bit more design work inside of there. Vinyl Master Cut, you can do some basic work and then also vectorize some shapes, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So this button next to the printer button right here is your send to the cutter. And you have to have something on the screen before you can click it. So I've got my name and then now pull it up. But uh, I will go into much more detail into this because this, this is its own section itself with the vinyl spooler and everything. And I want to make sure that I cover all of that. So we'll get back to that a little bit later. 
Right next to that uh, is the cut button, which kind of works just like, say, some of, you know, control C, control V, and then control X, cut, copy, and clipboard buttons. Uh, you, I'm sure you're already familiar with these from other programs, uh, but say here, I, you know, I'll click the copy button, and just, you know, just so that it's going to save it to this uh, clipboard. Um, and that way, if, say, I wanted to remove it, uh, and then push it back later, you've got it right there. Now, with the cut, I'm sorry. Yeah, with the cut now, also, if you cut something, like say I'll just do a real quick clip art here. And if you click cut, notice that it moves the object to your saved you know, or your copied clipboard. Um, so you know, that's a, another useful tool that you can have. Uh, me personally, I use the keyboard shortcuts, uh, control C for copy and control V uh, to paste and then control X for cut. Um, you can do it either way, but personally, I, that's just what I've grown up using is just the keyboard shortcuts. Next, we have what is this button? It's grayed out. So, yes, once you have something selected, it comes up. And that is going to be your copy and delete buttons. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different from our other uh, copy <coughs> button right here because when you actually, let's do, go ahead. So, right now, see how I've got a single Josh right here selected and I can move it around? If I have it selected and press this copy button and I go to move it, there's a copy right underneath it. Um, so, uh, very helpful if you're going to be, you know, copying something and then, you know, want to make multiple copies of it. Um, again, I still use the Control C, Control V, but uh, here's another option. And then you've also got a delete button so that if you rather don't feel like pressing the delete key on your keyboard, you can just press it right here and get rid of the object. Next is the order button. And let me just show you what that is. So I'm just going to draw a square real quickly. I'm going to make it purple. And right now, it's currently over my name. So what I'll do is I'll just go to order and then tell it to go back one. And then now my name is going to, going to appear in front of it. Um, and like say if we had more objects. Here, I'll throw in just one more square. green one. Now with it, oh, I copied it. Let me just undo that. Quick control Z there. Now um, I can send it back one. It's, you know, then it's going to be behind everything. I'm sorry. I, when I click two back, it's going to send it back behind everything. Uh, that's going to be behind my name and behind the purple. Um, let me just move it back to front. That means in front of everything. Uh, then I can just go back one. Then it's got my name. Then you can see the purple behind it. And then if I wanted it to go back one more, like say if I have four objects, I could do the same. And the same thing goes with uh, forward one. It's basically the same as back one, just one place. Two back, we'll move it all the way to the back. And two front, we'll move it all the way to the front. Next, we've got our snap guide. Um, this is basically when you can tell it to snap to certain things. Um, for example, I'll just go right here to view and then select grid and that'll put the grid on. And then I'll go back to my snap and the grid snaps on. And then you'll notice that my name is going to just snap wherever that grid is. And that's going to be very helpful for when you're uh, trying to line something up or making sure that something is in the correct position or is the correct size. Now, leave that there. And then, of course, you know, there's some other things that you can turn here. Some of the guides, which uh, I'll show you how to set those up later, which are basically just lines that you'll put somewhere. See? So you can kind of like use that as a guide and have it snap to it. Uh, and then just a few other things, but um, I'll get more to the guides later and explain the rest of that when we get further uh, through uh, the Vinyl Master software. All right, right next at this little apple is our Contour Cut Wizard. Um, now, just like I mentioned on the cutting tool, 
Um, this is a little bit more involved, and so I'm going to go into detail on this later. Uh, I've even got some videos uh, showing you how to set an item up. I'm sorry, how to set something up for cutting and contour for a contour cut. Um, and that's something that I do a lot uh, with the Laser Point 3 for my printable inkjet vinyl or even my laser vinyl. Um, so really cool things you can do with that, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now let's talk about one of my favorite tools, and that is the outline tool right here. So you see we've got my name right here, nice and boring. Um, make it a little bigger. Well, with the outline tool, You'll just click right here, and whatever object you had selected, it'll bring up this little um, window here, um, and then we can adjust the outline. I'm going to do it red. Uh, you can't see the color selection is popping up off screen, but um, I selected red. Now you can kind of see that it's got a little bit of it showing now, but here, let me just increase it here. Uh, when you go up with the percentage, uh, it doesn't go as large, like say if I was to just go up with this one. Um, so, you know, just to fine tune it, this works. It goes up by about a half a percent each time, but I mean, you can type the numbers in there and see what it is for yourself. Also, if you, you know, don't want to keep the holes in your row and other letters that uh, will have holes, you can select this button right here and check it. Now, let's talk about some of these different corner styles. So I've got it on smooth right now, and if you look around the top of the H, you can see it's just a smooth corner. Let's move it to sharp. Now you can see we've got hard right angles for corners, round. I uh, kind of like smooth, but just, uh, I, I don't know, rounder? <laughs> Sorry for the bad jokes. And then mit, mitrid, someone can correct me uh, on my terrible English and grammar uh, and tell me how to say that, but I'm just going to say mitrid for now. Uh, but you can see it's kind of got like a uh, angled edge to it. Not bad. Uh, that would be really good for a lot of uh, um, some of the more economy stepper motor cutters too. All right. So I'm just going to leave it as smooth uh, for our detail. Um, you can do the contour cut here, dash line here, but this isn't the best place to do that. And we'll show you a little bit later. Uh, if you had some images in the design, you could uh, also include the images. Now, this doesn't work. 100% all the time, but, um, you know, and then if you had some effects that you're adding in, uh, you could do that too. But again, you know, that's really uh, something that you're going to be using in the later versions of Vinyl Master, like say DSR. So once we're happy with it, we'll hit accept. And I don't want anybody thinking that I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan or anything. Uh, so, but uh, this is just the colors I chose. Now, um, you noticed just a moment ago that when I went to move it, I moved the red. It's because once it's created, it's going to, there's two, there's still two separate objects. So it just created that outline right underneath it. And I mean, if we go back to our order and we were to move it to the front, you know, you'll see that that red's still there. So I'll just move it back. Um, and a real quick tip, if you want to, uh, you know, Make sure that you don't actually just grab one and then move it off. Oh, uh, don't erase it like that. Highlight, you know, just make sure you have this selection tool select right here. This is going to be the top left button uh, in the corner, as you can see right there. And then just click and drag the box over it, and that'll select both objects. Um, and once we have both objects selected, you'll see, and you can tell you have them both selected because when you click the X, it's going to move them both at the same time. Now we can just go to uh, Arrange and Group. And now we don't have to worry about it. They're grouped together as one object, and we don't have to worry about it splitting around again. And you know, if you ever want to do that, then just ungroup. And then there you go. It's split up again. So, but uh, I will show you more about grouping, but I um, just wanted to give you that quick tip now. So, moving on from the amazing outline tool, you've got uh, these buttons here, which are basically your undo and redo. Um, so, hey, here, you know, oh, didn't like that, just undo. Oh, maybe I liked it, redo it. Um, you know, works great. Again, I use the keyboard shortcuts, Control-Z for uh, undo. 
I don't know the shortcut for redo because I never redo my mistakes. <laughs> I'm only undoing them. Um, and then next over here, uh, this little spaceship here is the launch pad. Now the launch pad will take you to a couple of different things. You've got the vinyl spooler, uh, which is something we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Submit feedback. So if you want to give the people at Future Corp uh, some tips or, you know, hey, I'm having trouble or it would be much better if it was over here, uh, let them know. Uh, tell Sean I said hello. <laughs> uh, then we've got your gateway, uh, your settings preferences, and this settings preferences, what this does, it's just another way to get to your preferences for your general settings. So if, say, for example, if you wanted something in metric units rather than, you know, uh, inches and feet, then you can change it that way. You can change some of your display settings with the grid, uh, sizes, but uh, I leave things default and don't really mess with those too much. Uh, and then next you've got another setup wizard that uh, just basically, you know, talks about large format printing, vinyl cutting, program and maintenance setup. Uh, the beautiful thing about Vinyl Master uh, is that they really did a great job on help topics. So, like, remember when I had you pull out this menu over here? If we go to it uh, and then go to the display, where is it at? Uh, well, it's not in the demo version, but in the actual version that you received with your cutters, um, there's actually a help selection that you can um, choose from here. When I switch over to the DSR, um, my actual legit copy, uh, I'll show you that uh, But when I'm showing you the contour cut. All right. Oh, I'll show you. Get to that later. All right. So now we're going to leave this static toolbar and move over here to the left. Um, and mess with these tools over here. These are your selection and design tools. And the very first one I'm going to talk about is the selection tool. Uh, you already saw me come over here and select it, and that's what I use to drag and drop over everything. You can also resize things. Um, so whenever you select something with your selection tool, you'll see that it'll create these nodes around it. Uh, you even got some smaller nodes here. And you can just click these, adjust things however you want. Um, if you're worried about warping things, when you select things, hold down the shift button before you go into resizing mode. And that's going to make sure that it keeps it nice and centered. And then see how I'm shrinking it that way compared to when I just grab it without shift. I'm just pulling it and then going to just, and it goes from like one corner, the opposite corner of where you're pulling from. Hold down shift, it'll stay still and centered, and then you can just resize it from there. Nice little pro tip that took me forever to learn about that shift key. So right below it is the node tool. And what the node tool does <clears throat> is obviously gives you a few more nodes to select for. So um, you'll see that once I had it selected, the selection tool went away. But let's say I'll click here on this J. It brings up all these little tiny little dots, what are called nodes, nodes that we can click, and then you can use it to customize the vector or shape of your image. Now, I am not the most talented person in the world, so uh, I will leave that for your imagination, as you can see. I'm just going to press Control Z a few times here and correct those. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the nodes in just a moment, but let's get over here to the text tool. Now, the text is the third one down over here in our selection and design tools. And what we're going to do is I'm going to click it with my left mouse button, and I'm going to hold down the mouse button, and it's going to bring up these other two options. So we've got uh, the artistic te text and the vertical text, and then toggle to vertical, which basically just swaps them. So um, artistic text is just basic left to right. Hello. You know, just your normal stuff like you saw me type my name with. Uh, if we go over here to the vertical text, some people call it hotel text. Um, uh, I probably am the only person who calls it that because I learned it from Sean over in Australia. So thank you, Sean. Okay. Sean is the creator of Vinyl Master. Nice guy. All right. So now that I've got the hotel text selected, I'm going to select my node edit tool. And see how I've got a couple different options here? 
uh, with these. Uh, I can click this button here and you can slide them over. And then if you go and you click, say, right here, see how we can see these tiny little nodes right here? This is what you can do to, you can click these and change the distance in between them. So very helpful if you're wanting to do something artistic. Uh, let me just delete that. <laughs> okay, so moving on from that, uh, I'm going to put it back to normal because it just looks weird if it's not in the normal artistic text for me. OCD is attacking again. Um, next, we have our power shapes. Uh, the power shapes are great. Um, you saw that I built some squares with them, and let me tell you why the power sh shapes are so special. Um, because they have these extra nodes on the inside, and these can be very helpful when you're do making science. Uh, I'll grab this one right here, and it lets me... Ugh, I didn't mean to right-click it. Let me just start over. So I'm using only my left click, clicking it, and then bringing it in. It helps me create a negative space inside of the square, so I don't have to put another white spot or go through and delete it or anything like that. And then this one here will round the edges for me. So, if, say we're making a box, uh, you can make a box. Um, I use them a lot for circles. And why I use them a lot for circles is, all right, so I've got my negative space here. And then this little circle over here, I wanted to, like, say, do it like that. And you kind of got a Chicago Cubs or a Pac-Man or whatever you want to call it. But let me show you something uh, really cool about this. Um, okay. So, like, say if you've got, let me make it red, let me make it red. All right, so say if we, I'm just going to grab a basic clip art. That's going to be our next lesson. Um, uh, I am not a very good designer, so we're going to put a camel here. All right, so I'm going to put my camel here. All right. So we've got our camel, um, and now, so we kind of, what if we, you know, we're going to, I'm going to take it right here, and the reason I'm taking it right there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit copy. Actually, let me hit this one. I'll hit this copy. And now I have two of them, right? So with this one, what I'm going to do is go to arrange. I'm sorry, arrange, no, not arrange, what am I doing? Order, send it to the back. That way, when I grab this and bring it down there, boom, find it. Now, uh, with that other one I've got, let me show you this button here. So right here is another way to extend it. And then here you can see I've got my page here. Right now I'm only working on one page, but if I click this tab here, it's going to move me over to objects. So I've got my one circle. I can see Josh. I can see everything. Oh, wait, here's my half circle that I copied before. So with this one, I'm going to order it to the front. And now you can kind of look like you've got a 3D effect, like half of your camel is behind the circle and then half of it's in front of it. Um, so Really neat tool. Uh, Power Shapes makes it that easy. Uh, you'll find yourself doing this a lot. Like I've seen people, you know, put like a race car where it's kind of like behind some of it or in front of it. Um, this is a very common trick that's used in the t-shirt sign industry. Um, so you're welcome. <laughs> All right. And then we've got Power Shapes for arrows. Uh, they've got a few, um, and the way that these work is, you know, you can adjust uh, these nodes down here, you know, for some of the angles, move it around, but nothing to do a cool negative like we had in the last one. Um, and so, but what if you wanted to do, like, say, a negative inside of it? Well, um, for this arrow, I would just, you know, keep your one arrow right here, go back to your Power shapes, arrow, turn this white, and, oh yeah, I really turned that white, huh? <laughs> there you go. And 
then you can kind of have like that second layer on the inside of it. Um, so obviously you would do a better job than that because you're a much better artist than me. All right, moving on. So that's our power shapes. Right below that, you've seen me digging in this file already. We've got your general clip art and your basic shapes. So with Vinyl Master Cut, you only get a sample selection of clip art, as you can see here. There's not much to it, but you've got some pretty cool basic stuff. Um, say if you were to upgrade to Letter uh, Pro or DSR, they're going to give you packs that'll have a lot more inside of it. Um, when I open up DSR after this tour, when I start showing the contour cutting and stuff, um, I'll show you some of the other clip arts that come with that. Um, then down below that, we have your basic shapes. And they've got arrows, as you can see, and then some of your other basic shapes. Smiley face, I guess, is a shape now. Um, so let's look at this square. So as you can see, just pretty basic square. Make it black, really thin. There's not too much you can do to it because it's not a power shape. It's just a basic shape. Um, so, yeah. Now, uh, below that, we've got the magnifying glass. Uh, I don't use the magnifying glass. It's a zoom tool. You can pan in. Um, you know, I use the middle mouse scroller um, because it's going to zoom in wherever you've got your mouse pointed. And that seems to work just fine for me. Um, uh, you've also got some zoom tools down here in the corner. And this is what I'll use more often than these over here because I can press this button and it'll center everything. That's this button right down here. Uh, this button right here will zoom out to show the, the extent of the currently se selected items. So if I have the Josh selected and click that, it'll zoom in and show that on my entire screen. Or I can click this button right here, and zoom out. And then you've got a minus plus, you know, same old stuff. And then you've also got a quick select, that way if you want to zoom in here. Kind of the same things you've got here. But again, uh, mouse scroll for the win. In my opinion, that's my opinion totally. Okay. Um, below that, you have your pen tool. Uh, this is going to have your freehand curve polyline pen tools. Um, when it comes to the pen tools, freehand uh, is going to look worse than your handwriting. Oh. Uh, uh, I guess I should turn everything off white, huh? That way we can see it. Yeah, so if you want to do your art, you can do it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, not really much to it. Then let me just go ahead and erase all of that. Next, we've got the curve tool, which, you know, you'll kind of draw a point, then bend your curves this way, click to your next one, and so forth. Um, eh, kind of basic, and then when you're done, very important, when you're done, either click enter, which doesn't work as you just saw, but you're gonna wanna click this done button right here, and then it'll complete it and be finished. Um, next, you have the polyline tool, which, works like the curve but uh, you just make it and it's just straight to it and again when you're done you know you can't click done you're not going to click anything together you just hit done and then it's complete and ready to go I personally honestly I don't use those tools ever I've never used them <laughs> ever except for in these demonstrations um, so we'll just Leave that however it is. Next, we've got your warping and another way to get to your outline tools. If you select this outline tools, it brings it up over here. For me, this doesn't work as well um, because you're not going to be able to see an instant. You can't instantly see it. You can preview it and then apply it, but uh, I just find that using this up here is way better than using the outline tools down here. Um, so we'll go back to the object manager. Just leave that at size. Uh, but what this does, as you can see when you click it, just brings up the shortcut over here uh, in our expanded side tools. 
So I'm going to put that back on size, scale, and proportions. All right. Now, the next one that we have over here in that same button is the distortions. Now, um, this is kind of where when you're using the Spinal Master Cut, if you're wanting to create, like, say, an arch text or, any, or an arc text or anything like that, uh, this is where you're going to have to do it. Um, and it's, you know, you can put a circle right underneath it and try to line up with it, your arc on that. Um, it's, it can be done. It's not, the, it's not the most fun thing in the world to do, um, but it can be done. If you don't want to do that, then you just upgrade to Vinyl Master Letter, um, and then you'll have the arc text and everything like that. Um, and it's, it's really worth it. And we're also doing 50% off. But more on that later, more on that later. So once again, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have it selected, right? And I highlighted both of them because I want to warp them together. So then I'll go in, select my distortions. We'll start with a flag. Now, you'll see how it just brought up all of these nodes here. Um, and once we've got it, I can move it around. I'm kind of been. And if you've been to any of our open houses or garage sales or if you're planning on going to our expo you'll see plenty of these signs for anything that is stretch because i made all the signs and i did this to all of them that say stretch um so yeah and then once you're happy with it just you know your selection tool and you're good to go now um, the only thing is once you've done that you can't go in and adjust it as text anymore um so once you've made those adjustments and make sure you're happy with it. I mean, if you want to adjust the text and you're going to have to undo those adjustments and yeah, then, then you'll have to make the, or you'll have to undo all of the adjustments, then change the text to however you like, and then redo the adjustments. Let me just show you a few of the other effects that they've got here. The 2d, Oh gosh, let me make sure uh, that I do as I instruct and highlight both of these and then move it. You kind of, yeah, so you can kind of see the 2D effect. All right, so let me just return that back to normal and then show you the final distortion, the cylinder. Hey, automatic. Pretty easy right there. All right. Now, uh, right below that, we have our weld, combine, and break apart tools. So um, for the combine, you want to know the combine? I have both of those selected. I combine them. Oh, that's not right. That's different. So what I was show <laughs> thought I was showing you was the group. The combine is, I've got, like, say, let me put a square here. So I've got a square here, and then I've got another square here. Put them over each other. Highlight both of them. Select combine. Notice the area where they combine, you know, where they overlap each other is now empty, okay? Now, this next one, the weld, this is going to be very important when you're doing text. Um, let me just go ahead and get this out. Let me find some fancy script. Now, if you're wondering where I got all these fonts from, you can download fonts for free off the internet. Uh, Duff Fonts is one of my favorite sites, or Fonts 101. Uh, you'll download the font, install it, and when you install it, you're installing it in your Windows directory. So every program that you use will now have those fonts installed. Okay. Bland Villa Vista. J. K. F. This is all about me, so you can learn my initials. Mental initial is, starts with a K, so we'll just put it there. I know I'm doing this wrong, and it's probably the worst monogram you've ever seen, but this is why you guys are the designers and not me. I'm just here to show you the purpose or how it gets done. <laughs> All right, 
So we've got these letters. It doesn't really look like much, but we've got them. This is a J, there's a K in the center, and there's an F. Now, what I'm going to show you is also going to include some of these buttons down here in the bottom right. Okay, right now I've got this button selected, and this is show all with fill. Um, okay, so see how everything's showing that's all filled in? Next, this button right next to it is going to show all in a colored wireframe. So now you can see we've got our different colors, you can see all the different uh, designs we've made, and you can even see on our circle, you can see that, oh man, it looks like it might, you know, we've got two things there. All right. Next, this button right here to the right of it is show everything as a single black wireframe. Okay, so this is just showing everything as a black wireframe, just like it says. Then this final button right here is going to be show the cut wireframe. So where's the blade going to go? What's it going to go, you know, where's it going to go through? Now, it's going to stay whatever color you have it because, you know, when you split up, like, say, a multicolored image or it's a layered image, it's a bunch of different colors, um, it's going to cut by the color. So it's just going to do that. You can see you've got the red areas here and then the black areas here. Now, why am I talking about this with welding? Because, as you can see, when we combine these letters like this, they're going, you know, we're going to cut through that K multiple times here for the J, here for the F. And if I was to try and cut out my little camel uh, right here, um, you would notice that, you know, we're, the red is actually going to cut, you know, we're going to cut through there twice. So what we do is we highlight the things we want and then we click weld. And then as you can see, once we hit weld, wherever it was going to intersect in these letters, it stops. They all become one single cut. So we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, just having some slices through our monograms. Now, let's talk about our little red circle. Now, it might be kind of hard to select both of those because, you know, we've got them right on top of each other. So that's where this is going to come really in handy. Uh, remember, this is what I got to. It's next here to the size tool. Remember, I clicked the tools. And then there's this other arrow right here. And that's what's going to open it up. It originally is going to open up on your first page right here. But I just clicked objects. And that brought up the map to where I could see every single object on this page. And what I'm going to do is select that circle one. And then that little second circle. I'm going to hold down control and select it. Actually, I meant to hold down shift. Shift is what you want to hold down. There you go. See, when you hold down shift, it's going to allow you to... Oh, my God. I'm terrible. All right. So I'm going to select that one, the smaller one. Then I'm going to hold down Shift and out here, click that red one. And now <laughs> you can see that it actually worked. <laughs> and it selected the big circle and the little circle. Okay, I'll show you everything that you don't want to do and what you need to do. So now that we have those selected, I'm going to do the same thing. Weld. And now I've got that solid circle. Okay. And then if I go back down here to the bottom right and do my normal filler, now yeah, you can see it kind of, it put it all in front of it. But don't worry about that. I'll explain that later when we're going to cut multiple colors. Because, actually I'll just explain it right now. Uh, that's not really going to be an issue because when we do the cut, uh, we'll just click separate by color. And then you can see all your red and then all your black. All right, I digress. So again, this is important. Why you want to make sure that you combine them uh, when you're going to, you know, do a cut that'll have some letters that are going to maybe have the cut path run through them. So very important that you do that. And then of course, you know, if you're not happy with it, you can just break it apart, and it'll break them all down not the way you want to because it just breaks it all down into individual vectors um, so let me just control z control z and control z z z z z so once you have these things welded 
there's no way to unweld them other than to go back and press undo um, because it's just a single object now. Now, that would be different from, say, if we did J, K, F, lowercase. Man. So hard to click. All right. Still kind of running through each other, but uh, what is it when we just when I just hit arrange and group? You know, they're one item, but you know, there's they're still three individual vectors that we're going to cut. So um, weld fixes it. But uh, if I hit arrange and then ungroup, there's still going to be one group because I welded them together. Okay, hopefully that clarified that jumble that I was just speaking. So now I'm just going to click this button right here and return the filling everything um, to the images. So let me. Aha, someone did correct me. My turd. I probably said that wrong too. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Kenneth. I appreciate that. All right. So, right below this is going to be your align tools shortcut. Now, when you click this, all it's going to do, and this is what I'm talking about, this is the align tool. Whenever I click that, it just brings up the align in space from over here in my side tools. Um, and this is something that you're going to be using a lot. Um, say, for example, let's see, Josh, all star. Uh, this font is just too much for me. I go back to my, I like my Acme font. Josh, all stars. That's right. I am now a baseball team or whatever team. I'm a team. Um, and just for continuity's sake, that's right. Everything kind of looked the same. Josh Camel All Stars. There you go. That's me. Oh, terrible. All right, arrange, group, group, so I don't make any more of those mistakes. Get rid of these squares. Okay, so select the three items you want. Uh, we can align them as a group, just in the center of the page, or we can align them to each other uh, and center them all on each other. Um, and as you can see, when I did that, it fixed my Josh because before, you saw it was a little bit slid over to the left. Align as a group and then align to each other. Beautiful. All right. So very, very helpful. And then if you have some questions, you can click the button right below for the video. Um, now, then you've got your guide tools. Um, so you can do this two ways, um, by clicking this box here and then horizontal guides and setting them. Um, or you can click the ruler and then just drag and drop your guides wherever you want. And so that is our guides. That's well combined and that's gonna be yeah, so we've done the selection tool, node tools. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it on the selection and design tools. Um, let me see. Now, so let's move down here below to these little smaller icons here. Um, so you've heard me mention before talking about pages. Um, and so here you can add different pages. So say, for example, if we have Josh All-Stars let me just clear this out. Josh's Camel All Stars kind of sounds like a cigarette. I don't, I don't, I'm not, 
I don't condone smoking. <laughs> just leave it at that. Uh, but yeah. All right. So say if you've got to do like, say, a large order for um, like, say, like a sports team where you've got like a, a lot of the same design, but, um, um, you know, different names or numbers or something. Um, let me just pull up some numbers. 21. All right. So what we can do is just, what's it? I'm not going to use keyboard shortcuts. Just copy it and then add a new page. And then Josh All Stars, paste it. And then we can just go in, change your number 23, uh, maybe Johnny. I don't know. Probably spelled that wrong too. I'll just call him Jimmy. I know how to spell Jimmy for sure. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. He's a member of the Joss All-Stars. So, I mean, that could be something that makes it really helpful. That way you can just save the design and have everyone on the team name. Uh, like, say, if they want to come. Oh, well, we, we made it to um, playoff, so give us a playoff T-shirts. All right. Um, and you can save it and just edit it nice and easily. Uh, so the buttons down here, um, this of course takes you to the one page, this takes you to the next. Uh, if you want to go all the way back to the first, then you've got this button here. If you want to add a page, you have this button right here, and that will create a new page. And then you can set your page options where you can change the width and height uh, and all of that. Now, since we're talking about width and height, um, this is a good point to move on to that. Um, so, I've got the selection tool selected, and right now I don't have anything on here. Let me move back to page one. And so I don't have anything selected. While I don't have anything selected, you'll notice that up here in the top, you've got your settings, units, nudge, all of this stuff here. But what's most important is this. This is what we can do. This is where we can change the size of our cutting mat. Right now, I've got it set to eight and a half by 11 inches, which is a normal sheet of paper. Uh, I do a lot of printing on that, so that's pretty familiar. But um, uh, if you look right here to the left, you can they've got a lot of predetermined sizes. And if you're doing heat transfer, vinyl, uh, sign blank, you know, 24 inches, they've even got uh, uh, 15 by 5. A lot of European sizes in here, so if you're doing some strange sizes there, you can. Um, but the best part is you can just do a custom size here. So a lot of your heat transfer vinyl will come in uh, at about you know, 15 inches in width. Then just adjust it to however many inches you want here. Um, now, if for some reason it's not in inches, then what you want to do is just go up here and click View. And then you can select Units, and you can change your units right here. Okay? So, but that's how we do that. Now, uh, while we have the selection tool selected, and also nothing is selected, because you notice when I select something, that all changes. And you also notice that when I have something selected, you can see I can click this fast group button to group them or ungroup them. Now, if I don't select on it, look how these change. Now I've got page on, page off. Uh, that way you can change, you know, turn off the borders. I can turn off the grid from down here rather than having to go inside the menu. Then I'm also going to also access the settings down here. And again, that changes every time you click something. So more options will come up uh, for whatever you click. Um, and those are going to change here and then also up here. So, and everything is going to have different options. Like see here for the text, I've got some text options. I can change the font. Um, and then like, say if I was to select both of them, I don't get that option, uh, because the outline background wasn't designed as a text or font. It was just designed as a background. So it's just going to be considered an image. Um, so if you wanted to change the text on that, you would have to get rid of the background, then adjust your text and then move forward. Okay. So then over here on the right, well, let me just go ahead and do a refresher. This, as I told you, is the zoom buttons. Uh, we talked about those earlier. 
And then over here uh, is your wire frames and then also your cutting path. Um, so very, very handy tools to use. All right, now over here to the right side, um, of course, is the Vinyl Master Design Center is what this, the official name. I call it the side tools. And this is pretty basic. Um, so you've got a couple different options that you can select from up here. But first, I want to talk about these over here on the right side. Um, how we've got our color palette and then also an extended color palette over here. Um, and then also some of the buttons that you can do right here. Uh, this, you know, some of your favorite colors. Obviously, you've seen I've been doing a lot of black and red. So there they are. Um, let me move this back. Uh, let me put the filler back in. Then what's really, really neat is this button right here. What it does is uh, you can match colors. Um, so you've got your default colors, you know, um, you know, Salmon, dark, whatever, just default colors. But what's really neat is if you select this final colors button and you click it, um, you can see all the different types of brands of vinyl. And, you know, Chemica, I mean, you've got PolySign, PolyTape. What's that brand that we sell that I'm having? Yeah, Oracal. <laughs> so, Oracal. Sorry, it's getting a little late in the afternoon. My brain's shutting off. So you've got your different types of Oracal, and then you can match it with the colors of the actual vinyl so that you can have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like beforehand. Um, and again, that's just over here on this expanded color palette by clicking this button right here. And then this top button right here, uh, what it does is, um, uh, I forget. Um, uh, I can't remember what this does right now, but, um, I, it's probably, it's because I never use it. Um, so I, I'm sorry, apologies. I, uh, my bad on that one. I will have to go and do some research. So next thing we've got back here over here on the right side is your normal, uh, color palette. And you've got some, you know, more contour cuts, uh, options here. Um, Again, this isn't the best spot for contour cutting. Uh, the apple is, and I'll show you more on that in just a moment. Then over here, we've got um, <clears throat> your toggle wire wireframe on selected objects. So, so if we select that, click it, then you can do your uh, wireframe. Um, and then right below that, you can do your cut dash pin line uh, for contour cutting. Um, but um, not anything that I've I do a lot of contour cutting, not anything that I personally use. Um, and if you're using Bottom Master Cut, you're probably never going to use that option either. Then next over here, you have your object manager and properties. In other words, so that's going to show you every single thing here that you have on each page. Um, kind of like this does, but it's going to put it into a text uh, format. Uh, underneath that, you have your size, scale, and rotation which uh, whatever item you have selected, it will display that information for. And then you can also hit this button to mirror it. Um, so really neat. Um, then uh, below that, you have your, of course, uh, align and space guide, which you've seen before by clicking this button right here. Now we've got your guides and grids, which is kind of pretty much the same thing uh, you've got right here. And then your outline tool, uh, again, as I mentioned before, this one is not as, it doesn't do as much as the tool does up here. So um, I'd recommend you use this one over this one, just because this one will give you a live preview instantaneously. And then you have your display view tools. In other words, you know, if I wanted to turn the grid on and off from here. So basically, this is going to be the same thing as you see right here in the view. All right. So next... Uh, I want to go over the contour cutting and then also the vinyl spooler. And to do that, I'm going to just switch over to Vinyl Master DSR, uh, my official version um, that has all of these features unlocked. So sorry about the blue screen. Got a new document, drop right there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is just load in 
file that I've got of some wizards. Okay, and that's going to be for our contour cutting. Now, before we get to the contour cutting, a lot of people are probably wondering, what if I found an image on the internet and I wanted to vectorize it and cut it? Or what if I wanted to make an image that I found on the internet cuttable? Well, Vinyl Master makes that very easy. And that's with the vectorization tools. So here are some terrible images that I have downloaded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a PNG file. Uh, I had... I had something. All right. Yeah. So a PNG file. Uh, this is this spell ahead and just drag it and drop it. And why I like PNG files is because, you know, they'll they will have a transparency in them um, to where you don't have to worry about the background as much. And they're usually a higher resolution uh, because if you have a lower resolution item that's pixelated, it can cause you some issues. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to show, so that's going to be a single color image, and then I want to show a multicolor. And if you've ever been on Shutterstock or if you've been on the internet, I am sure you've seen this bad boy before. Uh, it is all over the place, this world famous unicorn. Uh, I purchased it from Shutterstock, and so can you, because I can't design that. <laughs> all right, so. The first thing, you know, these are just JPEGs, and as you saw, I, or I'm sorry, PNG files, and I just jagged and dropped them. This also works for PNG files. I'm sorry, also works for JPEGs, TIFFs, uh, and all types of PDFs files. Uh, you can also bring in vector files uh, as well, um, this way too. Um, so SVGs, you know, dot standard vector graphics work very well with this. So, you know, if I was to try and cut it now, um, yeah, no cuttable artwork detected. You're attempting to cut an image. You must vectorize first. Well, how do I vectorize it? Um, I'm just going to take my select tool. Um, don't let this fool you. Just, it's just got um, Vinyl Master DSR. Just has an extra thing. But this is still the basic select tool. I'm just going to take the select tool, and then this vectorize button is going to appear. I'll click vectorize, right. and then it's going to scan it. So there's a few things you can do here. Um, I can have you know autocorrect, color, black and white, whatever. Honestly, I don't ever mess with this. Um, I don't mess with any of the trace mode because I adjust it here myself. And 99% of the time, the default right here is just fine for me. The only time that I might have to adjust it is if I'm given a bad image that is really pixelated and is of poor quality, uh, then I might turn down the level of detail because when you have something that has like kind of like a blurry pixelated image, um, you'll get like these specks of image that you might need to remove. And to do that, you can just adjust your level of detail to rotate and then hit trace. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to click accept. And then uh, when I go to send it to the cutter, it now lets me send it to the cutter. Okay. Um, what about, say, a multicolored image? Um, well, same thing. You know, we're just going to make sure that we have it selected with the selection tool. Uh, hit vectorize. And it's a little bit bigger, so this one's going to be a little bit slower. And while it's doing this, I'm going to have a sip of water. I'm going to mute myself so it doesn't sound gross. Okay. All right. So now, now that's done vectorizing, you can see we've got all types of craziness that doesn't make any sense. So um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is add a few more colors until I can get something that makes sense and possibly remove this pink. And you're like probably wondering, Josh, why is it causing this pink to go here? Well, because this file is a JPEG, and it's actually a full white background, not a transparent background. So it makes it really hard to fix. Um, and, you know, there's a few things I can do. Like, if I right-click something, 
that's going to put an X over it and take it out of the image, which, you know, might not be what I want to do. Because if you notice, when I get rid of that, I kind of get rid of her cheeks. And, you know, nine colors of vinyl, ten, that's a lot. Nobody wants to do that. I mean, look at this. So it gets kind of confusing. So this is why I say always use the PNG file. Um, that way you don't have to worry about having a background, and it makes things a little bit easier. As you can see I'm almost there, but you, um, if you zoom in here, you see I'm missing that flower. So let's see if we can go up to 13 colors like nobody wants. Ugh. Yeah, all right, success. So 13 layers later, <laughs> you have it. So um, this is why it's important to make sure that, you know, you try to use the proper images, uh, JPEG, uh, I mean, PNG, um, high resolution, and maybe something that doesn't have as many colors. Uh, you can go into your editing software and you know, maybe change the colors a little bit. Uh, if I had some time, I could go into Photoshop and do that. But now I'll just click accept, hit trace, and just wait on it to finish building our vector. And yes, the larger the file you use, the longer it's going to take. I've actually got a pretty fast computer uh, running. Uh, God, what kind of processor is this thing called? Ryzen. Yeah, I've got a Ryzen in there. As you can see, I don't even know my own computer. All right. So once we're happy, I clicked accept. Now I've got a cuttable object. Now, that's really all you need to know about how to vectorize images that you can pull off the internet. Um, you're wondering how to find images on the internet. Um, you can go to all types of websites. Uh, me, personally, um, you just go to Google. And just, I don't know, uh, cat vector art. Vector art is really good because it makes it nice and simple. Then click image, and then there you go. You can find all types of stuff um, and download it. Uh, each copy of Windows, if you just do a search in your search bar, comes with this free tool called the snipping tool. And what it does is basically just let you do screen capture. So if you find an image you like, Ooh, hey, I like that cat. You know, all right. I, you know, would recommend clicking on the image and getting something larger. Uh, most sometimes, you know, see how you can see the size of it right here, 800 by 800. It's a very, you know, that's a high quality image. And you can see that it's got, you know, the background here um, showing that it's transparent. So this would be a good image to save. And you could just save and follow the cat. But, you know, that's how you can find some images. Um, now, some of those images may be under copyright, so make sure you research that before you post them on your website, because I wouldn't want you to get in trouble for selling a copyrighted image. Now, um, now that we've covered that, let's get into cutting and how to tell your machine to cut. But, you know, when you install Vinyl Master, uh, it should have, say, what kind of type of cutter are you using? Um, you know, what type of cutter are you using so it can install the proper drivers? Uh, real quickly, what I'm going to do here is go to the vinyl spooler from the launch pad. Launch pad is the spaceship up here. And it's going to open up this separate program over here. And you can see I've done a bunch of jobs in the past. So you can see all my you know, past jobs. You can see all my done jobs. Vinyl, it's really... It's a great program, um, so I mean, and it's separate from your Vinyl Master, uh, but you can see all your previous jobs and everything, um, and you can even filter them by color and everything. It's, it's really, really neat. But what I want to show you is uh, over here on the connection. And with it, say, for example, we don't have our machine connected, uh, or, you know, you don't know... It's plugged into a USB port, but pff, I don't know what port it is. You know, I don't, I don't number them, and I'm sure you don't number them. I don't know anyone that does number them. Um, so what you can do is just click this auto detect button, and it's going to ask you to turn off your machine and you now and try plugging it back in. But um, you don't really have to do that. And so um, what I'm going to do is show you. All you have to do uh, in a real quick video uh, of 
you know, once you have this screen selected, um, how to get it to find your cutter. So let me pull this up. So I'm just going to make you look at my ugly mug for just a second. Over here. And it's going to open up. Hello, hello. And then I'm going to show you this. So in this video, you can see that uh, I've got it. And then as soon as I unplugged it, it's really short. <laughs> it's a short video. Uh, let me see here. As you can see right here, I unplug it while it's still powered on, and then it tells it takes me to step two, okay? Um, and then while it's still powered on, you know, this is just unplugging the USB cable connected to the cutter. And while it's still powered on and everything, I just plug it right back in, and it's detected the correct port. We're good to go on everything, and, you know, no reason to go... No reason to lose your origin point when you're about to start cutting. So, all right, that's enough of looking at me for now. Uh, we'll get back to this. So that's how you can tell what port uh, your cutter's on. Uh, if you need to install another cutter or, you know, make sure your drivers are installed correctly, all you have to do is inside this same connection tab in your vinyl spooler, just click Add. And then you can choose your make and model. So nice and easy. All this stuff down here, don't really touch unless you have, uh, unless you're talking to technical support. All right. So now sending an object to the cutter. All right. So uh, right now I've got this Bella Beauty head selected. Um, now, if I have nothing selected, and then I just click this button here and send to cutter, it's going to send every single job. Now, I'm going to turn off the separate by color, and then you can see I've got both the jobs down here. Um, now, let's talk about some of the options on here, on your vinyl spooler. Of course, you know, you can choose which cutter you're using. I'm using... SC laser point. Uh, you can select the media width of your materials and you can also name your job. I haven't saved anything uh, so it's untitled. Uh, what's really awesome is if you wanted to save some vinyl you can rotate it. That way you don't have to take all 10 inches. If you've got enough length you can make it cut the width wise. Um, advance after plot. If you see this dashed line uh, that uh, appears that means after it's finished finished cutting, it's going to advance your vinyl forward uh, to whatever mark you set it at. Um, you can take it or leave it. Uh, I, I use it. I like it. Uh, but if you're feeding sheets into your machine, uh, it's just going to spit them out on the ground. So I'll leave that to you. All right. So absolute position. Absolute position is taking it and putting it at the absolute position that you have it selected on your material. So I've got it moved a little bit over to the right. It's going to move it a little bit to the right. Uh, what Vinyl Master does by default um, is tries to save you as much vinyl as possible. So it's going to put it right in the starting point of your registration mark. So in the corner of your vinyl or wherever you put your registration mark at. It's always going to try and use the least amount of vinyl. And then hitting the rotate button will help with that too. Mirror button. Of course, if you're going to be cutting heat transfer vinyl um, and you don't want it to show up backwards on a shirt, you're going to want to mirror your text, mirror your image. Um, if you're going to be putting something on the inside that's going to be showing outside, like say a sign that's going to be on a piece of glass, then you would want to mirror it um, so that it shows up right. Um, and you can do that here or you can also do that and you saw that in the text tools and object path selection. Um, so another place you can do it is here. Now, uh, mix job, draw and cut. Uh, that's not anything that we're going to ever be using. Um, uh, I don't use pen tools and we really just use these for vinyl cutters. Next, you've got your separation as vinyl cutters. Uh, we use these as vinyl cutters. Uh, next you've got your separate and color. Um, so your separate and color that is going to be when we're going for a multicolored stuff. So you can see I did that Bella Beauty. It was all black. And then I've got the 5,000 other colors <laughs> of that unicorn uh, here. So, yes, um, 
that's very important because if I wasn't to select that, it would try to cut everything all as one and you just have a solid, solid image. Now, what is the um, registration marks? This is very important for when you're doing a multicolored layered image. Um, heat transfer vinyl, uh, not so much. I mean, you can use these uh, to help it, but you know, heat transfer vinyl, you've got that clear backer and you're going to just be using I layer it. But when it comes to adhesive vinyl for signs, you're going to want to, you know, you can line it up by eye, but that's going to make it hard. So what Vinyl Master does is put registration marks on here. And if you notice, yeah, it's going to take up a lot of space, but those registration marks are all in the same spot. So wherever you cut, you know, whatever color you're cutting, that's going to have that registration marks. And if you just line those registration marks up after weeding, then you should be able to have a perfect straight image uh, if you line them up correctly. Um, so, yeah, registration marks are a big, huge help. And you're probably wondering, like, why do I have these boxes around there? These are uh, speedweed boxes, and these were <laughs> these were selected before I got to it. So what it does is it puts little boxes around whatever you're trying to cut. As you can see, we've got a lot of open space in between the registration marks and then the actual uh, vinyl where we're cutting. That's going to make it much easier for you to weed. Uh, and how much easier? Uh, a thousand times easier, especially when it comes to your text. Uh, the auto weed box is also going to put a box around your area that you're working in um, so that you don't have to weed out all the rest of that. So another very helpful thing. Uh, then we've got, um, of course, you know, speed weed text only. There's no text, so can't really uh, use that. And then auto speed weed. Um, you can select speed weed text only uh, if you don't want to use auto speed weed for some of the other stuff and if you only want it to be for your text. Easy lift, uh, we, easy lift weed marks are going to be, say, uh, like say if you have an O uh, and like, you know, the little circle in the middle of the O, sometimes it's hard to pull out. What this will do is we'll put like a little line through it and make it easier for you to weed. And then if you forgot to weld any parts uh, on there, you can just check that box and it'll weld it here for you. Now, um, once you're done that, you can immediately go and cut your jobs from here. But again, I like to send it to the spooler. So I'll just select spool all. And then you can go to the spooler and then cut each job individually. It pulled it up and excuse me, it pulled it up in another window, but here it is. Uh, so you can see that you've got uh, the preview for each one. It's got all of the registration marks and everything there. And you can cut it there. Uh, once you're done, if you don't want to filter it by job, you know, you can see all of the other jobs that you've done and just basically keep working out a vinyl spooler. Um, so that's really why I like to do it in vinyl spooler. And then plus, you know, if you have multiple cutters connected, you can work with them through here. Uh, I use multiple cutters from a single computer quite often when I'm at a trade show. Uh, it does work and it works just fine. All right. So that's pretty much how you're going to cut a basic vinyl sticker with your cutter. Um, there. Now let's get into contour cutting. And contour cutting is basically, so say if we have a printer and we wanted to print out our full color designs onto like printable adhesive vinyl. Uh, for this example, uh, I'm going to show you my ugly mug again so that we can show you some videos. Hello, hello. And what we're going to do is, um, yeah. first thing I'm going to do is on the screen, I'm going to show you how we're going to set up for the contour cutting. All right. This is what my end project is going to look like. Everything is going to be lined up nice and nice and beautifully. And I'll have these contour cutting marks around the outside. Uh, these marks are going to be uh, what tells the machine the distance between uh, this and your contour cutting line here. So, so I've got my stickers here. They're not lined up. So what am I going to do to line them up? Of course, I'm going to use our wonderful lining tool. And right here. And I'm just going to align to each other, have them center on each other. And then same thing here with this group, central, central, 
center, center them, okay? Now, space them out just a little bit because I don't want my contour cutting lines to intersect with each other. Now, highlight everything that I want to start the contour cut on. And then I'm going to click my apple up here. Create contour cut wizard. Or create, con create, let me make sure I say that right. Create cut contour. <laughs> All right. So this is going to kind of work just like our outline tool. Um, yeah, I'm just going to click the outline percentage until I get something that I'm happy with. Um, if I wanted, you know, if I had holes, I could keep the holes. You know, it's basically just like your outline tool. Um, now, I could have the contour cut go inside of it. It's where it bleeds through a little bit as you can see, um, but I kind of want my stickers to have kind of like that white outline from uh, leftover from the um, sticker, so I'm just going to keep it like this, and that's going to be nice and simple. All right, so once I'm happy with my contour, uh, just hit accept. As you can see, kind of got some things touching down here, so let me actually move this guy down a little bit. All right, and now nothing's touching, and I'm happy with it. Hit accept. Here we go. And then now, with everything still selected, contour cut wizard. Now, we've got a couple different options here. Uh, if you we were using, like, say, a SC2 or a Titan 1 or a Titan 2, you would be using the manual contour cutting. The con manual contour cutting. I'm using a laser point 3, so I'm using the automatic registration mark. Uh, with manual contour cutting, you have to line up the laser with each one of these con these registration marks you see around the outside manually. So that can be a little time consuming. Uh, so automatic registration marks uh, is basically where you'll have a laser read them. It'll start with, you'll line it up with one point, and then the laser will read uh, this one, then move on to the others. And once it's done, it will proceed to start cutting out all of your stickers like you want it. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, I've got my first thing I wanted to do was make sure that I selected my uh, correct cutter and then the type of contour cut I'm doing. I'm doing an automatic registration mark. And then we get down to our printing device. Uh, this is important because, you know, either we're going to print to a, um, you know, print directly to a printer where you can save it as a PDF and then print it out later. Um, and saving as a PDF is what you'll do if you're using, like, say, a wide format in some cases or sending it to someone else. Save it as an image. I don't like to do that. It just, I mean, it works, but just not as well. Uh, uh, save it as a PDF or print as a PDF. Uh, those work great. Uh, you can save it as a PDF, share it with everybody, just kind of like same as printed as a PDF. All right. But what I'm going to do is print directly, and what that's going to do is send the print job to a laser printer. Um, I've got the little ghost printer behind me, um, but uh, so I'll just go ahead and click print. I'm not going to change my mark positions because if everything's just fine. They're still on the paper. Um, I'm not going to do any of the calibrations inside Vinyl Master because you can actually calibrate on the machine and it's a thousand times easier, I promise. So once we've got our cut, you know, I've got to select, print, select. We're going to send it to the printer we want. I will hit print. And then if we go over here to the magic, uh, if you want to look at my ugly mug again, we'll go over here and then you can see the laser printer over here doing its wonderful job. You might be like, that doesn't look like what's behind you. That's right. I recorded that at an earlier date. <laughs> so once it's done printing, We'll be back over here on the cut. All right, we'll go back to the contour cutting wizard over here on the normal screen. And then we'll hit cut. And it's going to bring up this screen. All right, and what it's wanting you to do is line up that laser, or sorry, not the laser, but your the tip of your blade with that bottom right hand corner, right there where it's flashing where it's pointing to right here. And when you do that, 
and it's lined up, you hit next. You're going to hear a big error here. You'll hear it start to go. And it's going to look something like this. Maybe. All right. So I've got it right there in the center, and you'll see it's going to start scanning it. Uh, now, because I'm using small 8.5 by 11 inch sheets of paper, I'm having to use a cutting mat. Uh, but now it's found the laser, or the, it's scanning the top right. Now it's moving to the top left, and then to the bottom left. And then once it's registered, uh, each one of those, it says, okay, now I know the distance in between um, these registration marks and where you want me to cut. And there you have it, your, your contour cutting. Um, now, it may take you, for your first couple of times when you're setting it up, it may take you maybe about three or four times before you're getting it going. But once you get the flow and know exactly where to start putting it, I mean, you can get it first time every time, uh, no problem at all. And, you know, the nicer machine you have, the easier it becomes. And it becomes, you know, really easy. Yeah, here's here's me peeling it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's contour cutting right there. And that's pretty much covers the basics of Vinyl Master Cut and everything it has to offer. I know I, little, I ran about half an hour over on that. Um, um, just... Does anybody have any questions about anything here? Uh, do you want to see anything else or need me to explain anything else a little bit more? Uh, I haven't seen any questions up.